Whenever I'm annotating and I'm just starting out, I usually like to make subsets. Let's say that I start with a big database that has lots of text in it. Then there can be very good reasons to first only consider a subset as you're annotating inside of Prodigy. One of those reasons could be that we're dealing with a unbalanced data set. And to give an example of that, in this video, I'm going to be dealing with customer service texts. And due to the very nature of it, most of those texts will be complaints and there's going to be very little compliments. And if I'm interested in building a machine learning model to detect compliments, then it could make sense to make a subset with lots of candidates that should be compliments just to start with. Then at least my machine learning model has a data set that it can rely on instead of having only very few examples. So how might we go about creating such a subset? Well, we could, in this particular case, leverage pre-trained sentiment models. The thinking here is that we take a text from our database, we then pass that through a model, and if the model then says, yeah, this seems to be very positive, and the model is quite confident about it, then we can pass that to this subset, and then these instances can have a priority. So let me show you how you can quickly bootstrap this. So here is a Jupyter Notebook where I'll be attaching some sentiment models to my data set. Uh, I have a dataset.csv file over here. Uh, the main important column in there is this text column. And then below here, I just have a couple of sentiment models that I'm applying. Uh, all of these sentiment models come from this package I made called Sentimeni. Uh, you don't have to use this, this is just a implementation. Uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm attaching uh, four different sentiment models and their scores uh, to this data set. So as a very quick demo, I can uh, scroll down and I can uh, sort this data set. Uh, each of these models attaches a score. Um, and what I can then do is I can take the sum of all of those scores like you see over here. So here you can see I've got a score for the Vader model, one for the text blob one, uh, one for the IMDB one and one for the Amazon one. And the thinking is that if all of these are super positive, then the sum of all of them is super positive too. And if I just take the top 200 highest scores, uh, then I might have texts that for a large extent at least should contain compliments. And here I also have two texts where that seems to be true. Uh, someone is saying that something is very good and excellent value. And below there, someone is talking about loving something. So uh, that seems all well and good. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna uh, take the top 200 examples of this, and that is something I'm going to be passing uh, to Prodigy. All right, uh, so what I've done is I've saved the 200 uh, most positive sentiment scores on disk, uh, together with their texts, into this uh, positive.jsonl file. Uh, and what I'm about to do is I'm about to uh, run the manual text categorization recipe. Uh, I'll be saving my results in a data set called ComplimentsDB. Uh, again, you can see that I'm passing the data set here and uh, I'm attaching a label called complement. So let's see how well this works. All right, uh, I am now inside of Prodigy uh, and what I'll just do is I'll start annotating. Uh, and when I see a couple of interesting examples, I'll uh, reflect on them. So I just had a couple of compliments, but now I saw this interesting example. Uh, so this person is saying, hey, it's my birthday today. Uh, so I'd love to treat myself. A celebratory discount code would be amazing. Um, okay, so in this case, probably because the word love is in this sentence, the sentiment model got triggered, uh, but this is not a person giving an actual compliment. Uh, so I am going to reject this example. Uh, interesting example though. Ah, yeah, this is also a good one to maybe mention. Uh, so in this case, someone is saying, thanks a million uh, for phoning my house before 7 a.m. today to tell me that my grocery delivery would be between 9 and 10. My kids were especially pleased to be woken on school during a holiday. So what we're seeing here is uh, sarcasm, which is one of those things that makes sentiment models really hard to do right. Um, so in this case, I can imagine that because the word thanks is in it, uh, again, the sentiment model got triggered, uh, but also in this case, it just got it completely wrong. Um, so this will also be uh, a rejected example. So I think this one is also nice, mainly because it's just such a genuine compliment. Um, so shout out to the customer service team at the Liverpool One store. Uh, they helped correct a pricing issue today quickly and with smiles. So, okay, definitely nice to see that compliments are definitely a thing, right? So also good to see that this approach also works. Um, so that makes me quite happy. 
Okay, so uh, I've been labeling for a while, I think about 20 minutes or so. Um, it's telling me that there are no more tasks available. So I've gone through all the examples. Um, and if I open up this little summary tab over here, then I can also get some insights. So about 150 accepts, almost 50 rejects. Roughly, that's uh, about 75%. Uh, of all the data so far, which I would argue is a pretty okay ratio, uh, given that it's not a whole lot of work to prepare one of these lists. Um, I can imagine that uh, as we make this list longer, maybe we're not going to check 200 examples, but maybe a thousand. Uh, it is also likely that this ratio will drop a bit. Uh, I can definitely imagine that. And I can also confirm that uh, within the rejections that I have over here, uh, a lot of it were like sarcastic, snarky comments. Um, so there's definitely still some challenges um, once you start modeling this, right? But all in all, uh, I think this is a pretty nice approach. It wasn't a whole lot of effort. Uh, and I do like to think that I uh, was able to spend my time wisely. So just so you know, uh, pre-trained models can help you quite a bit when you're starting with your annotations. Uh, so definitely feel free to use them. Uh, but there are a couple of things to keep in the back of your mind uh, if you plan on doing this uh, yourself. I guess my first comment would be to always remember that models are just that, they can be wrong. This can happen for a bunch of reasons, but one thing to keep in the back of your mind is that maybe a model was trained on Amazon ratings, and you could wonder if Amazon ratings are the same kinds of text that you can expect in the domain that you're currently considering. If that's not the case, then maybe a model trained on that data set is not going to translate well. Another thing to keep in the back of your mind is that uh, some of these models uh, can be heavy. In this video, I've mainly relied on bag of word models that are relatively simple or sometimes even rule based. But if you use more of the transformer types of models, uh, then it might take a while to go through your entire data set that first uh, time, uh, which is also something to keep in the back of your mind. And the final thing to keep in the back of your mind is that technically uh, we do have a biased data set right now. And that can be fine because we're just starting out, but you might also imagine that for model stability, um, it might also be a good idea to have more examples of non-complements, uh, especially if non-complements are more frequent, uh, which in this case they definitely will be, then you do wanna have a data set that in the end reflects reality. And if you have a data set that has more complements than non-complements, um, then you might get a biased model. Uh, and that's just something to keep in the back of your mind uh, as you're doing this. But yeah, having said that, creating a subset when you're starting out tends to be a great idea and leveraging sentiment models can be one way of doing that.